Tonight, in a brand new Channel 4 documentary investigating the shocking effects cannabis has on the human brain, broadcaster Jon Snow agreed to be filmed smoking the drug with terrifying consequences. After just five minutes in the scanner, I was feeling more and more anxious. I don't know what it is. Oh. I'm going to come and let you out right now, OK? I felt awful in that, absolutely terrible. I mean, if you can stick it out in Gaza, you should be able to stick it out in your scanner. Well, John joins us now. What are the aims of the programme? Well, that was me coming out of a um, MRI scanner, and the whole idea is, in fact, to look at the effects on the brain of um, smoking skunk, which is a, an extreme form of cannabis. I mean, most of what people would have understood in the 60s or 70s as pot or cannabis um, or hash was, um, you know, pretty mild by comparison to this stuff, which is adulterated. Um, it's got two key ingredients missing that are in hash, which prevent sort of brain damage and the rest of it. But in skunk, these, these, the absence of these uh, two ingredients make it extremely tough stuff. So that scene that you saw was, as I was stoned, now, I have to say this was a Home Office approved experiment <laughs> um, and, and it's a proper trial in which there were 22 guinea pigs of whom I was one. I just felt actually that if we were going to do a program about skunk, which is effectively what we are talking about, um, then I needed to have experienced it. Mm. Um, as I said, I had experienced ordinary hash as a student and the rest of it, but skunk never had. So, I mean, you, even your body language watching that clip mm. then is, is, is quite closed. How vulnerable did you feel? Well, in, in a sense, you see it on the programme tonight because the, um, they filmed the whole experience. You, mm. you, we have to ingest two balloons of vapour, which is the equivalent to a spliff of, of um, skunk. And very quickly you see me become very disorientated. I mean, what it felt like to me was that my soul had in some way been wrenched from my body. I, there was nobody in my world. I felt in a very, very dark place. Couldn't even conjure an image of my wife, for example. I mean, an extraordinary, a very dark place. It has to be said that not all the guinea pigs experienced this, although um, uh, others did. Um, it was quite a mix of outcomes. But I suppose the really important thing is that um, this chimes with the report that came out last week from King's College, which said that 25% um, of all psychosis diagnosed in London last year was down to skunk or had a relationship mm. with skunk. Mm. Uh, and the problem is that the only substance on the street that really is being marketed as cannabis is skunk. 80% of all hash or cannabis, or whatever you want to call it, mm. is skunk. So the market is absolutely deluged with the stuff, which is very often homegrown, grown domestically and the rest of it. Um, and when people talk about cannabis, they're talking about skunk these days. Mm. Yeah. Uh, something uh, very strong. You did, you, strong. you likened the two, skunk versus hash, together. I mean, it is a, it's a, a chemical difference, a chemical mm. thing. THC, was, which is tetrahydrocannabinol uh, mm. in cannabis, is what makes people feel stoned. Mm. Less potent varieties of cannabis, like hash, uh, THC is about 5% of the plant. In highly potent skunk, THC levels have increased to 15% or more. And another major difference is that hash also contains uh, cannabidiol, which is mm. CBD, which can act as an antidote to some of the THC. THC effects and skunk has none of that, so there is no there so, are no there, softening effects. There are no softening effects, and, and one needs to recognise it's been genetically engineered to be like that, mm. to be as strong as it's possible to make it. Um, and I think what one really has to say is that if anybody has a kind of psychological weakness of any description or, or a, a mental condition, it can easily trigger it or exacerbate it. Mm. Um, and you know, in a way. It's not a story about criminalisation or anything like that, although uh, it has to be said that if there were a market as there is in Holland, for example, or in Oregon in, in the United States or uh, in, even in the capital city of the United States in Washington, um, it would be legal to, uh, to buy ordinary, un less damaging mm. cannabis on the street. But here, because there is no market, there's only a ban and therefore a criminal supply, that supply is adulterated and serious trouble.
So you were you, you, your father, um, and you uh, your, your sons, and uh, yeah, I got I got daughters. daughters. Yeah. Uh, would you would you? Lots say, of people think Dan's my, my of course, my, but it, but if he's he'd have to be a daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's, he's my my first cousin was from me. If um if you were bringing up your when you, your children were uh, were going to university now, yeah. would you be considerably more concerned? Uh, about no, I, I think what I would do would be what I'd want to talk to them about it. And mm. the trouble is, I never knew anything about it. I had no, I, and I've even I'm, I even chair a project which uh, I used to work in before I became a journalist, in which drugs are quite an issue. It's a, it's a place for vulnerable and homeless teenagers, um, and I had no idea that skunk was so seriously adulterated mm. form of cannabis, um, and I, I think. All that's required is is actually talking the truth to people. I can't can't even imagine that there are children in classrooms who have ever been told any of this stuff. Well, know. to be absolutely honest, I've learned loads about it this morning, mm. and I'm, you know, have from doing this program. Do you feel that you are more aware of the effects that it has on people? So, if your own daughters were mm. smoking, would you more easily recognise any of their habits or attitudes? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. To be absolutely honest, I mean. I, I was stoned for four hours, I suppose. Well, so what I mean, are you saying now? Sorry, John. <laughs> it's, it's odd, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was stoned. <laughs> um, newscaster admits I was stoned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but, but in, it, seriously, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily. I mean, mm. it, it would be possible, I suppose, if somebody started exhibiting a, a mental condition that you hadn't previously seen, mm. that might be an issue. But generally speaking... You come off it, and that's it. And I admit that there was a bit of euphoria as I came out yeah. of it. But um, I think, you know, in, in the home, I mean, unless, unless they did it in the home, you'd have no idea. But you certainly know if it was in the home, you'd see them it's staggering smell. about, as you yeah. see me staggering about in this film tonight. You, you say yeah. that the, the effects then, we watched that in the clip, were worse than reporting from Afghanistan. Well, no, I said I felt worse yeah. than I felt in Gaza, for example, which, yeah. and I felt dreadful in Gaza. But, I mean, I know I didn't feel... F frightened in the way that I felt when stoned. I didn't feel paranoid in the way that I did. I mean, you saw me in the scanner there. The fact is, I was supposed to be in there for an hour. I was unable to sustain more than five minutes. And you hear me crying out, let me out of here, please. Can you let me out? The, the programs like this are uh, controversial. There was the, uh, the Ecstasy uh, yes, program, yeah. a documentary, I think it was in 2012. Um, and and I, sh I should say that in both Ecstasy and Cannabis, we, we, you see the actual chemical reaction in the brain. You see the cerebral cortex, which connects the motor with the emotional part of the brain. And you see it actually uh, break. I mean, it comes back together again, but for a moment it's completely interrupted, so people can't control what they're doing. Do you think that uh, that the the program on ecstasy uh, had uh, a, a positive effect on those who may have been tempted to experiment in that way? And likewise, do you think this will be a, a documentary that might put off someone mm. who potentially would be tempted, or it would just be voyeurs who want to see John Snow stoned? Well, even if they're motivated to see John Snow stoned, which is not a pretty sight, I can assure you, um, I think they'll be lured into a program which will educate them um, and uh, I think will leave them very clear about what the choices are. And at the moment, I don't think the choices are clear. I think people think they don't know what they're actually buying on mm. the street. They think they're probably just buying what, what we used to understand as just being hash, but it isn't because in the trial, we, we do. I had to do every Friday, I had to go to University College Hospital. Um, I did skunk. I didn't know what I was doing. Of course, the, they didn't, it was a blind trial, so it was skunk hash and a placebo. I mean, some people got a bit stoned on the placebo. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit of mind over matter, but mm. uh, um, no, it was, it, it was... And, I mean, this is a very naive question, I don't know if it's relevant, but is there a difference in a physical appearance of skunk and hash? Do, do... No. So no. you absolutely have you, no... You, you have no real way of knowing. But as to the benefit of the programme, I, I don't think it's pure voyeurism. I think it is a real attempt to try and show people physically what happens to the brain. And we have on the programme Dr David Nutt, who, uh, uh, Professor David Nutt, who used to be the government's drug advisor. Uh, we have um, the only approved professor who's allowed to uh, fiddle about with um, uh, cannabis and um, the rest of it under Home Office licence, and she has run this experiment. Um, and so, um, so it's a proper job. So at the end, what will we find out? 
I think at the end we will see physically the effect of smoking skunk on the brain. And for many people, it comes back to normal again. Uh, but for a good number of people, it doesn't. And those figures about the psychotic um, manifestations in, in London, I think, bear that out. Uh, the, uh, the programme we've been discussing is uh, tonight at 10 on Channel 4, Cannabis on Trial. John, thank you very much. Well, I hate to use the phrase, but hashtag, hashtag, uh, <laughs> Drugs Live is the Twitter handle. <laughs> <laughs> no.